times where there are voices from every direction, from every source. We need to hear from you. Lord, we don't want to be a clanging symbol like with our love, but we want to hear the love of Jesus for His planet, the hope of Jesus for every person on this planet. But we, your people, want to know how to navigate the way in times that we know are drawing to an end, but they're not the end. So Holy Spirit, right now, I pray for your direction across this service and across the words that I speak but most of all into the hearts and minds and church I want to encourage you to be people that are tuning in right now what do you want that you want to hear from him Moses famously said back in the Old Testament we can't go anywhere without your presence and we have now in the New Testament him residing in us but I wonder how much are we still going without His presence because we're not tuning in and hearing and listening. As my dad used to say, we're like cats drowning in cream. We have so much, but we have so little. So right now, church, let's just lift our hands for just a few minutes and just, you ask God, God, I need to hear from you. I need to know the road ahead. I need to hear, see your light shining on my footsteps and on my path. And so we open ourselves, God, to this in this house today to be people directed by your word and by your spirit. So speak, I pray. See every hand lifted as a sign of surrender and a sign of desire to hear the voice of God. In Jesus' name we ask it. Speak. Speak. And all who agreed said amen. 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 Stay tuned in. You may be seated. Stay tuned in to what God wants to say during this service, not just from my words. Okay. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Oh, I've got two or three of you said good morning. What about the rest of you? Good. Okay. Welcome to anybody of your guests here today. And glad you could be with us. And hopefully we'll see you again. I met someone very quickly before the service traveling around Australia. Well done. You actually stopped in the promised land, so I don't know why you'd keep moving. <laughs> and we have a, our affinity in music is a really, really, uh, and hopefully we'll meet you, uh, meet you afterwards and um, um, we'd love to catch up with you. So, um, so come outside, come into our cafe here and get a free cup of coffee and uh, we will catch up with you. Right, let's get into the word this morning. Um, I'm going to make some statements over the next few weeks that, don't misconstrue, but I want, and I don't want to put, bring opinions in. I want to just bring the word in, because of the season that we're in as, as a planet. And we've spoken over the last eighteen months. We've raised and done some end of times stuff, but um, and we've touched on that. And but I'm very conscious that we are very much in the end of times. If we if we um uh, if we don't know that, then we're either dead, or we're uh, not a Christian, or we're new to the faith. And Matthew 24 says this in verse three to four. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the signs of your coming and of the end of the age? And so he spoke to his disciples and he said this, and I'm not going to read the whole chapter. We might next week or over the weeks, and we have spoken on this subject before, but I just want to focus on, uh, uh, at the moment on the next words. And Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. And he continues to mention that or hint at that a number of times during Matthew 24 and all the way through uh, the New Testament. It is, we hear this regularly, let no one deceive you. And so we are in times uh, at the moment 
that as I said earlier, that we are, they are the beginning of the end. We, the, the signs are all there. The things that are mentioned in Matthew 24, which we've spoken about, mention and hint and show that we are in these end of times. Next term, uh, every second Thursday on uh, Walk Through the Bible, we're going to finish that term off. And Pastor Bill Caffey is going to be speaking specific, or teaching specifically on that subject, the, the end times, according to the book of Revelations, Matthew 24 and Daniel and so on. And so he's a former, uh, he's a retired uh, lecturer from uh, Bible College and Dean of Students. So he will be bringing you some amazing information and how to interpret scriptures in that area. So that'll be on term. I'm not going to get into that detail. You have time to get into that detail, discuss that. But I want to talk to you how we navigate these times. How do we get through these? And ships in rough waters have to still reach their destination. A cyclone comes, they don't sit there and go, oh, well, I quit. It costs them if they quit. If they turn around, it costs them. And so they have to make decisions, read weather patterns, batten down the hatches, prepare, get ready. They train to make the most of the time that they have to get through the storm. So it brings an analogy on the life that we're living in in times. And I mentioned a few weeks ago when we talked about Ezekiel, uh, sorry, Acts chapter 16, where that, that there is a presence and an atmosphere in our world today that is uh, like it did with, um, uh, with uh, Paul and Silas. It, it constricts and it constrains us. And we can sense that I'm not talking, but bear in mind, whatever I share today is not talking about individuals. I'm talking about a spirit of the age. I'm talking about the times that we live in, not the people that are, uh, that are around us. And the Bible teaches us very clearly that we don't wrestle against people, but we wrestle, uh, or flesh and blood, we wrestle against principalities and powers. So these are statements and things and, and thoughts are not about attacking people because Jesus died for every single person that has ever lived on this planet from the best to the worst. So if he did it, then we should do it. <coughs> but we have to navigate and we have to be looking and not receiving. But what about us when we're navigating through storms, when Bible prophecy is starting to be fulfilled in our times? When what we believe is no longer the cultural belief, when very few people around you believe, and eventually persecution starts to hit the church and you and I as Christians. What do we do? And the first thing Jesus said and has said and has said regularly is don't be deceived. Don't go astray. Don't be misled is what that says. See, Satan from the beginning spoke to Eve and his strategy was set up right then and there and he deceived her. Adam rebelled because he had the command from God, but she was deceived and we'll talk, discuss it. If you look at the greatest deceptions they always start with lies, end with tyranny, evil, and even genocide. Think about the deceptions that we've seen around the world and think about things that have occurred. And for example, Hitler was only a corporal in the First World War. He was a failed artist. He was a nobody. How did he rise to power, get a nation of incredibly intelligent people to follow, obey and participate in a world war that killed six million Jews as well as millions of others? How could an ugly little despot like him rise to such influence? Apart from the spirit behind him. But there was a particular man that helped lead him, and his name was Joseph Goebbels. And I remember all of this. I did study this at school. I remember at high school, I love history. And so we studied um, uh, the comparison between Germany and Russia between the wars, and I remember Japan and China, and things that I still in my brain 40 years ago are still there. And I remember them talking about this propaganda guru, Joseph Goebbels, said, if you say a lie long enough, people will believe See, deception is not about something that is done to you. It's about something that is said to you. From the very beginning, God said, speak, and he created the earth. Satan comes along and he speaks to, as a counterfeit to deceive those who follow, follow Jesus as his creation. And he still uses voice and speaking to lead us and to deceive us. I might get a chance to speak more about this. This is just an introduction. And he said, if you say a lie long enough, people will believe it. 
In other words, if you keep speaking to the self-interest of a people and what they want to hear for their hurt or their fear, they will drop their guard, they will listen, they will hear and they will obey. He even gave radios to the majority of the population of Germany so they wouldn't be listening to anybody else but him and Hitler. And they started to pump a message. He controlled what they heard. He repeated it and they got, he captured their minds, their hearts, their values and their morals. And an intelligent people, and you look at what the Germans have created over the years, and intelligent, they created the Mercedes, the BMW, the first rockets. In fact, they were way ahead, and thank God that they didn't get it even with the atom bomb. But they lost their way. They were led astray because the voice kept repeating to them and, minister, and, and in a sense, ministering to their hurts and their fears. And that's how they went. Satan got in the ear of, ear of Eve and spoke doubt to her desires. So for the one fruit she couldn't have, he went after. And she caved in and was deceived. So this starts a series. I thought it's important to talk about at the starting of a series of how to navigate. It's really important how, to talk about how we can hear, not from Satan, but from God. To make sure that we practice hearing and listening from God. To know what God says so that when we listen, we recognize God's voice and are able to see the counterfeit that is not the truth and know what to do. So we need, and it's titled today, Hearing from God. We need to hear God. We need to hear God. Do you get that? We live a life so that we are so self sufficient that we think we don't. But right now, just like what happened there and in ancient history all over the time, a voice can come that if we don't hear from God, we will not recognize and we will follow. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says this, It was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's Spirit, not the world's Spirit, so that we can know the wonderful things God has given us. When we tell you these things, we don't use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God. So don't listen to those who aren't spiritual and can't hear from God. There's a thought. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it for only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. I'm not going to break it down in, in, in depth, but you get the gist of what is happening. The Spirit of God has opened a whole new world to God's people. The ability to hear and know the heart and mind of God. He wants us to listen. He wants us to hear. He's given us His Spirit so that we will know what He's saying and what He wants for your life. The creator of the universe, the creator of you and I, the designer, the visionary and the equipper of our life. He wants to speak and He wants to reveal. He actually wants to give you direction in your life. Thank you for two or three. That's, that's amazing. Not the two or three, but it's amazing. The concept here. That God wants you to know what He's thinking and how you can navigate this world. So how does God speak? How does the shepherd speak to his sheep? And just very quickly, in, in summary form, and a couple of points of how God speaks, and then I want to talk about why we don't hear. First thing is the Word of God. The Bible. It's the primary way. God speaks with general words called Logos Word, and then He specifically will highlight something for your now situation. And we will call that the rhema word. It's a now word for my circumstance. It's prophetic, what I need to hear right now, and becomes an individual word to each of us. And so we need to be readers and hearers of the word. You are not gonna, if you don't know the word, if you are not reading the word and you are not looking at the word, you're not studying the word, guess what? You're not going to hear from God. You're going to be extremely limited. You might get a prophet come along and you'll get a word. But to be receiving the Word is what's going to set you free. If we don't know what God's Word says, how do we know the lies of the other voices? How will you know? 
Matthew 4 says this, Jesus answered, the Scripture says, human beings cannot live on bread alone. This is when he was tempted. But, but here's it, but need, not want or can have, but need every, every word that God speaks. Oh, not just I pick and choose because I get something on Sunday and that's the only word I need. God help you. If that's all you're taking is what I preach on Sunday, you're doomed, I'm sorry. Get into your word. I'm just a man and not, not even good at that. My favourite song is, what's his name? Better man. I want to, I want to be a better man. <clears throat> Obviously, the Scriptures don't have every situation you're going to face, but we have biblical principles which apply that we add to these things in our lives, like faith, hope and love. God is sovereign. His ways are higher than our ways. Sin separates us from God. We, these things apply. They help steer and direct us. They become our foundations. And God will never contravene or contradict His Scriptures. So everything should be put against the filter of the Word. You know what? I'm going to target and make it relevant to our, and to our season that we're in. Study it and find what the Word says. What I've discovered, you know, if you stick to the King James, a lot of words that were in the King James back when King James wrote it, or it was written in King James time, I should say, not he wrote it, um, they have changed their meanings and they were interpreted and translated according to what they knew at the time. And this week, in my study, I discovered something I've never seen in my life. I'm going to present it to you and you can do what you want with it. Don't shoot me. Don't call me a name. I'm not anti. I'm, let me tell you, I'm not anti. I'm not an anti-vacciner. I'm a slow vacciner, but I'm slow in everything you do. All right. Um, but here, have a look at this. In my study, a Greek word that has a new context in the light of the world we live in. In Revelation 18, chapter 23. Don't put it up. On, oh, sorry, you can put that scripture up on the screen. Yeah. It says, "The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore, and the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore." Bear in mind, I'm te- this is an example of how the Word will lead and direct you. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, in other words, the business and the corporations, for, your spy, uh, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. So this is talking about in the end times, and you'll hear this if you go to the classes, of what is called the ba- ba- Babylon. It's not the old Babylon, but it, it acts like the old Babylon. It's a description of what John called uh, the Babylon in the vision of the end times. It's a world system that will rise that is evil, ruthless, and controlling like Babylon of old did. It is both constructed and it's led by Satan. There will be an antichrist and there will be a a false prophet and and, and, and there's more. I'm not going to get sidetracked into that today. That's something uh, I've talked about, but Pastor Bill will be giving more detail. But in chapter 18, it describes how this system will be destroyed. Jesus coming back again. We're gonna those who follow him. We've got a great future, and it describes how it is seventeen eighty how it is destroyed. And here we see that in amongst a number of words in that chapter that it was built on the control. That verse says this empire or world system that is now destroyed. It was built upon the control of the financial and business realm. The influence of that using sorcery. Now, to me, I don't see anybody run around using sorcery. Do you know many witches and do you know anybody waving magic wands? Um, Harry Potter is make-believe. I haven't seen him floating around. He's not the Antichrist or he's a false prophet. So that's, that's where we go when we read this word because when these words were written, that's all we could, how they knew to translate the original Greek. I'm going to leave it there. So do you, or do you want to know what the original Greek actually says? That word sorcery... And I'll put it on, the, this is not me, this is from the Strong's Concordance. Put it on the screen. It's the word pharmakeia, where you get the word pharmacy. To administer drugs, the use of medicine, drugs, or spells. So your Babylonian empire is built upon the business world and its influence and the use of the pharmaceutical, whatever it is, the pharmacaeo being spread and influencing people around the world. Now, please do not hear me. I'm not saying the vaccine is the Antichrist or is the, is the mark of the beast or anything like that. But I'm pointing to how this end of times world will influence and rise and take dominion. It will not stay. It has a limited time. In fact, it implodes and its leaders start fighting against each other, etc., etc., and Jesus comes back again. 
So the hope is fantastic. But the awareness of studying the Word of God, we suddenly find a word that in the old days they, they tra- translated sorcery, actually in the current times has an interesting meaning. And he who has an ear, Revelations love to say, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Word of the Lord has to say. Makes you think. So you know the word to not be deceived and get lost in these end times. The second thing God uses would be or a group is impressions, thoughts, and desires. He uses impressions the natural way we can define our own impressions by knowledge and experience. However, we can also define impressions of what God wants by His Holy Spirit working in clean vessels. If we are a clean vessel, then we are, have the ability to get an impression that God has put upon our minds. The word says we can know the mind of Christ. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Jesus said, whatever you desire, ask in my name, it shall be given. He's allowing us as clean vessels to have clean desires and we can ask for it. You can turn that air conditioning off too. Um, abiding in the vine means desires are from Him and naturally produce fruit. So if we are abiding in Him, then we are going to produce fruit and we will have clean desires. And so we, we, through that clean vessel, the Holy Ghost can create impressions of how and what you should do. He leads you, and I haven't got time to give my illustrations over life, but he, but he will open a door and lead you sometimes. And I'm sitting there, I get an impression this is where God wants us to go in a service, or, uh, and he works like that. Romans 8, 5 says, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desi- desires. So when our mind is set on the nature, what the spiritual man desires, guess what? We're going to feel and sense and know those desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. That's the point I'm making. That what the Spirit desires, then we're going to get the impression, the desires upon us and know the direction that the Spirit wants to go. So it's not an open book to go, yeah, I feel this is the way God goes. You, know, that, uh, uh, you blab it and grab it. You know, no, it's, it's a, an impression. It's a, a word it's not, a, an impre- it's not an open book to run amok, but to hear what he is saying, judge it with the word and wise counsel. I remember getting the word of God to uh, just something happened to my spirit on a missions trip. There was a, a great missions trip and I was leading a team. Um, and in that journey, God, in the middle of all the chaos that we were going through and, and the, the stuff that was happening, and um, I just it was like a physical impression that a switch had taken place. I was assistant, associate pastor, executive pastor of the church and was happy to serve my pastor. And then God says, I want you to lead a church. I never desired that. I just wanted to serve somebody else. Still love serving somebody else. And so, but this click win, it's actually an impression. I switch, I've switched you on to the next stage of your life. Now to you, you'll go, wow, but to me, that was tangible. I can, even as I describe it, I feel it now. Click, you were called for such a time to lead a church. Also, this area includes his internal voice. God spoke to Elijah with a small voice or whisper. It's not audible to our ears, but to our spirit. You hear in our spirit. Colossians 3.15 also talks of another impression that we can get. Let the peace of God rule your heart. I got raised in this and my dad would talk. I remember hearing it all the time as a kid. Um, and I, I appreciate that. I got raised hearing this. That let God or let the Holy Ghost Rule your heart. Let him be the umpire of peace. In other words, when you, uh, you, when you do something wrong on a footy field, not that I ever did anything wrong. I was the perfect player on the rugby field. And I never heard the whistle except for my teammates and then everybody had to stop. But you got this. I can't do it. Um, uh, I'm a man with a man's voice. I can't do high pitch dancing. Um, and the whistle blew and everybody stopped. All right, the umpire said, penalty, foul, damn. Whenever they fouled me, they got it wrong normally. So, um, but you heard the whistle. Eh. And the same, the Holy Ghost will let you know when you're going in a direction, you hear eh, 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 whatever sound you want to make. It's just uncomfortable. Lack of peace starts to prevail. And you go, right. But you know what? You can override that because he doesn't, he doesn't force you. You can override that and then you override it and override it and override it. And eventually, you know, I'll finish with this later on. You get calluses and you get hard. Stop listening. Stop being obedient. Quickly, Mervyn, on third area, he speaks as in audibly. That's pretty, uh, I've never heard the audible voice of God. Some of you may have. Um, here's the thought, the clearer and the louder the shout, the more accountable we will be to what you hear. So um, um, number four, uh, pictures, visions, and dreams. 
Mind pictures like impressions. You know, I've shared stories about seeing in, uh, in, um, in worship and God's uh, speaking. And uh, I think the first time as a 16-year-old or 17-year-old, seeing the, a cloud hovering over our church at the time and God teaching me how that those who had their hands up, not physically, but had their hands up, God, the Holy Ghost was wanting to fill them so they could operate in gifts. But it needed a, a desire to touch and connect. Like Tracy said this morning, and we heard in, a word, so, uh, in uh, Tongues and Interpretation, our prayer meeting, to hunger and desire and to connect, to come to God. And I remember God showing me that as a kid, as a 16-year-old. And since then, I've seen things like that along the way. Um, even a few weeks ago, as we were preaching on a Sunday night, I felt the Holy Ghost start to say, and I saw a picture of, uh, not so the, the details, but the area of wombs in people's women's lives that they need, God wanted to heal. And it turned out there was about three or four miracles needed in the, in, that church, in the church on that night. And so God gives you these. And, and now we can go, oh, that's just my imagination. But if you're a clean vessel and you're hungry, guess what? It's a little bit like I'm thirsty. So I go to the tap, turn the tap on, water comes out and I go, I'm thirsty, but I don't know if that's water. Do you get that? We go to God, I'm thirsty, I want you to speak. And then when he speaks, we go, I don't know if it's God. We open the fridge. Oh, look at all that water. God's made it available, oh, but I'm not sure it's God. Well, if you're in the Word, guess what? You're going to know it's God. The thing is, we are very happy to wander around and we get a drink from the shop rather than from our own tap. We don't go to our own fridge and ask God. We say, oh, listen to YouTube and hear what they have to say. But God is calling us to hear from God Himself. God is saying, oh, well, I, can't, I didn't fall upon pastors only. God forbid. Some of them are, oh, they're the most insecure people on the planet. I got called Papa Smurf last week. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm secure enough to only cry for 24 hours. <laughs> and that was a child. I won't tell you what some of the adults have said. <laughs> but God is saying to you, every person, there, you have his word. You know, go back before King James, no one had a word. They had to listen to the priest. And here's us. 600 years later, still, oh, I better get a word from the priest when God says, I've given you a word here. Will you seek me? Will you hunger? Will you, oh, no, 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 I'm getting sidetracked. Um, and so God uses those things. The book of Acts said that he will, pour, he will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Sundance daughters will prophesy. Young men will see. Guess what? I've been two and a half years and I've been asking you, start prophesying. I'm going to speak to the church. If you're a guest here, just switch off for two minutes. Unless you're part of another church, take this for your church. It's time to prophesy. I've discovered that I'm actually getting into the dream world, so it means I've gone, become Papa Smurf. And God, old men will see dreams and young men will have visions, okay? I'll make up the visions just to make sure I feel young at times. But I'm cause stirring you. God is speaking. If God is speaking and you're sensitive and you're still not sure, come and ask me on a Sunday morning and we'll slow the service down. We'll create the opportunity. We want to hear what God has to say. But more, I also want to hear what God wants to say through you. So that while you are safe here, that means if you are in a safe place and can prophesy and, and, and give messages in tongues and words, and etc., etc., um, you will be feeling confident to do it in the community. But if we're not, <coughs> not confident here, how can we do it in the community? People need to hear her. People need to see us operating the gifts. Better quickly. <coughs> That's what happens when you get too excited. And God loves us. He's talking. He's listening. He's sending his Holy Ghost for his sons and daughters to prophesy young men to see dreams. And then he uses wise counsel. Uh, the, Acts 15 describes the council of the apostles discussing among themselves about the Gentiles encountering God. And they concluded amongst themselves. They concluded, led by the Holy Spirit. So be accountable. Listen to proven listeners and doers. Not the talkers. Go to the fruit bearers. You know, I've taught uh, when I've done some classes for the leadership team here and for the young guys. I thought, you know, when they talk, oh, what about this website? It says, if that person on that website is not accountable to anybody, then don't even go near that website. There's a lot of people out there who are unaccountable and use the internet to say whatever they want. The website has JW written on it. Don't go there. All right? That's just a little tip on the side for free. Gifts of the Spirit. 
And that's a, you read 1 Corinthians 12, and you'll see that the gifts of Spirit were there to God, to, to, for us to speak for God, but also for God to speak to us. Prophecy, tongues, interpretation, words of knowledge particularly. And of course, there's a bunch of others like Korea. Romans 6 describes that we hear from God through creation, and we can see God through creation. Angels in the Bible spoke. Wind spoke. Donkeys spoke. Burning bushes spoke. And God, and I'm just saying, God is uh, very creative. He wants his people to be created. And I love that thought, you know, that, uh, that if you have the Spirit of God inside of you, it's not to stay dumb and not to stay uh, living in the past and uncreative and no, no hope or future. It, in fact, you have the Spirit of God, which is a create. He is a creative being. So when we have the Spirit of God, he opens our minds and our expectations. So let's be part of that. So we know how we communicate, but how do we hear? We may think that's obvious, but maybe it's not. Because if you ask most husbands, their wife can be communicating with them, but they're not hearing. Or ask most wives. I took a drink. I'll say a Father's Day if you're here last week. Uh, all right, no. <clears throat> if you're here last week. <clears throat> Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. That is hearing the Word of God. Not just listening, but hearing. A lot of things have been coming into our ears, but what are we hearing? And it's the Word of Christ. And that Word from God, that Word that becomes a picture of faith. That's what you hold on to. Not what anybody else said, but you got. I've, people in this church who know that have gone through cancer, I will ask them, what has God said to you about your disease? And that's how I will pray for you according to the Word God said to you about your disease. Because you got a word from God, I'm going to agree with that word of God. And where two or more agree, what is, on earth, what is in heaven shall come to earth. I'm not going to pray my will. I'm going to pray what God spoke to you. So your uh, prerogative, and right at the end you'll understand why we have to go this way, uh, is to seek God for your disease that Satan has put upon you, that you may be healed. God, so that God may heal you. As people of God, we need to hear His voice. With many voices in our world, we need to hear. So why aren't we hearing if God has many ways to speak? Well, Acts chapter 28, verse 24 says this, verse 28, right at the end of the book of Acts. And some were persuaded by the, persuaded by the things which were spoken and some disbelieved. So Paul has spoken. And, so, and some, are, are, the words are spoken. They get it and others didn't. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah, the prophet, to our fathers when he said this. He, this is in Isaiah. It's also repeated in Matthew. Uh, it's the one scripture I know that's repeated at least three times. Go to this people and say, hearing you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing you will see, but not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their eyes are hard of hearing their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand their hearts and turn to God, so that I could heal or should heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they're now going to hear it. If you Jews won't hear it, the Gentiles will hear it. In other words, God is wanting us to not just listen and to know about His Word, but to hear what He's really saying. To not be deceived, to navigate the storms, to be healed, to have hope, to understand what to do in these times. Listening needs to become hearing. Men, to develop your relationship with your wife, listening needs to become hearing. Listening, I should, get, I should have said it last Father's Day. Listening needs to become hearing. If God is speaking, often the barrier is our hearing ability. This version says that we have become dull. NIV says it's like calluses have formed, creating barriers. Remove the barriers and we will get to feel, to understand and discern what God is really saying. The first step, of course, if you are not a follower of Jesus, you, some of what I'm saying is well, you can hear from God and go, yeah. Well, the first step is obviously to get saved, to repent of your ways, to let God heal the heart, to let God heal the inner man, let God restore you, get rid of the sin and the dirtiness out of the inner man, and so you can have a relationship so that you can hear. And you can hear like a husband and wife hears. You know, my wife can talk to any other man in the place, but it's not like talking to me. In many ways, I suppose. But there's stuff that we do, would never be said. Majority of what we speak about will never be said to anyone else. 
So when we are born again, we enter into a relationship so that God can speak to His heart to you, His desires to you, like the bride and the bridegroom. And so we need to be born again first. And these times, so the thing that calluses is we can feel, the thing about calluses is we can feel pressure but not discern the source or the purpose. I'm not a tradie. Look at my hands, they're soft as baby's bum. And you know, you're, those who are tradies, uh, you shake their hands and they take your skin off your hands. They go, go and get some oil on your hands, you dirty lot. Go and wash your hands. And um, no, don't say that. I, I'm really secretly jealous. And, um, but when they, when once I did do something physical, um, when they, no, I have done once. When my dad was a slave and my mum were slave masters when I was growing up. <laughs> did all the work for them. Look at my dad's hands. I did all the work for him. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but you know what? If someone that's a really hard worker, they get, uh, or a physical worker, I'm saying not hard worker, but a physical worker, get calluses on their hands that you actually can pinprick, you can even put flames on. No? And you'd burn it like that, and, uh, and, and they, don't, they can feel something, but they don't know what necessary it is. And when we as followers of Jesus form calluses on our heart, we can feel, we can sense something. We know something is happening, but we don't know what to do unless we listen and hear. In these times, we run everywhere because we feel the pressure, not knowing what to do. So we obey the loudest voice. We go to somebody and God's people are doing or letting wrong things being done because we're going to wrong voices because we're not going to the right voice. We've got calluses, but we're not able to discern what to do because of the calluses. And God today is saying, come back to the Word. Come back to what I have said all along so you may know what needs to be done. These areas that contribute to lack of discernment, let's quickly highlight as we finish it up today, to this lack of discernment or hearing what God is saying. The first one is that we, we, our discernment or hearing gets filtered because of our own flesh, cultures, experience and personality. We allow that to determine what I want to hear. Understand that your personality you get some born with, some of it's created by your environment. And so it's not all, that needs to be redeemed many times. Our mind is a powerful tool. It controls the emotions and actions of our lives. We're told about that in Romans 12, uh, to exhort and commands us to renew it because of this power. So when it's murky because of stuff we're going through, we may hear God, but wrongly discern. Oh, God speaking. But because of the stuff, I've got a filter that says, oh, that's what I want to hear. And really, I think that's what happened to Eve. I want that fruit. So that demon, uh, Satan knew that. So he gave her a reason to have that fruit. I want to get out of this. Oh, God, will give, Satan will give you a reason to get out of this. As you've heard, our motto in my family is that, hey, we don't look for a way out, we look for a way through. And that's because I know naturally I want to get out. Hurt people can hurt people. What we call prophetic discernment may be filtering through lenses of our past and not what God sees. We need to be truly honest with ourselves. We need to seek healing and sometimes we need to seek deliverance. We need words and wise counsel from others to help us in that direction. And when we come to the word, remember, it must be in right context. And if required, subject to wise counsel. You know, the word says that Judas in his depression, uh, uh, what he did, he went out and hung himself. Because it's written in the word does not mean that gives justification for anybody to go out and hang themselves. He murdered himself. And that's a sin. Proverbs eleven fourteen: where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So when we seek counsel, go to proven listeners, not, as I've said, not the talkers, to fruit bearers and not seedlings. Don't go to the seedling, go to the tree. Go to the tree that's carrying fruit and go, wow, I love what you produce, man. Can you give me some counsel out of that, what you produce? Many of us go to the person that's going to actually, doesn't have a clue and that all they want to do is, I just want to be your friend. And so we sit there and let them stroke us but they actually don't lead us or counsel us. The second area that causes like a callous or dullness comes is focusing on the natural. That's the natural way of discerning and we need that. Uh, God's given us a brain. We cannot ignore the brain. You know, we go, every day and minute by minute, we have to make discernment and decisions. But when we're wanting to know the heart of God, we can't rely on this. We need to be hearing inwardly. See, God's Spirit reveals it in a man. He will reveal the truth as we read earlier on. Do you remember Samuel needed to fight 
uh, this tendency to go with the outward appearance. When he anointed David, he first went to his brother and said, oh, that's the guy. Look at the outside appearance. That's obviously the man to be the next king. He was repeating what he saw in Saul. And, oh, it has to be a big boy. So big boys have to be king. So he's the man. And the inner voice says, no, this is the little boy is to be my next king. And because it's on your TV, because a friend sends it to you from WhatsApp or Snap, Snip, Snap, Snop, Chat, what do they call them? And all the other bits and pieces, YouTube and everything else you want to get. Um, does not make it true. The project, they're just entertainers. Some of them are comedians. Why would you listen to them? Oh, what's my sacred project? Oh, you just shot a sacred cow. Well, kill it and eat it and burn it. That one's for free as well. The third area just is that we aren't tuned in. And this is really a big area. Hearing means pay attention to what you're listening to. So at times I'm listening to my wife, but I'm not hearing. When we're driving along, and she just... And you're turning the radio up and down, up and down, up and down. And I had a customer today that did this and did that. You know, oh, these jeans look really nice. And I fall asleep at the wheel and no. I got stuck in the guys before, so now. And then, you know, then, no, no, we won't get distracted. <laughs> That's my revenge. Thank you, Carson. <laughs> because I'm not tuned in. I'm not tuned in. Now, for the older generation, for the young bucks, you're going to say, what on earth are you talking about? But there used to be a thing called a radio that had dials on it. <clears throat> the old people are laughing. What do you mean? Of course, that's normal. Some of you still got them. Uh, flipping heck, get into the fr- modern age, some of you. And you even, some of you got some little tubes in the back of your radios, haven't you? And, uh, and you hear... <laughs> and you turn the dial to get the channel. And we've got to keep turning. And, they, and modern science brought in a fine tune. Ah, oh, back you know, when that happened, my mum and dad got so excited, and they could fine tune. But you know, you, you tune up the, the the radio, and you get it, and then you got to fine tune it. Some of us are very happy. We sit there and drive, and we we're driving along. We hear this, hello, good morning. This is ABC News, and we get used to hearing the static. But that's not the perfect world. We actually got to learn to tune in. I have a in my motorbike. I have a, a, an old Bluetooth headpiece, and I've noticed that when I drive at a certain speed, it, the sound uh, uh, goes from my, through my helmet, and the words get slower. The songs. I'm going. What has happened to this person? But something is happening with the rushing of the wind and the, the, the cheap headset that I have that is causing it to sound. Come, Holy Spirit, and I go, man, my radio's running out. You know, it's really weird. But I learned as I slow down, I can hear clearly. And so I have to tune in. But as I get slower, I actually can tune in. See, we need to take time to fine tune. We sometimes need to slow down, be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. Elijah needed a word from God when he ran for Jezebel. And in the end, he had to stop, shut up and be still and hear the small, small voice of God. Are you tuned to the right channel? Are you still jumping about looking for the channel that appeases me now? Oh, I like that left wing, that right wing, whatever they are on radio, that YouTube. From music to sport to comedy to talk back to CNN to Sky to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snip, Snap, Chat, Chat, what? Whatever you want to call them. We won't discern God if my life includes putting God as one, one of the interests. If He's just another voice, then I really won't discern. Because the static coming from all the other voices is just going to... I think I heard and I got one word. I love... Repent. No, I didn't hear that one. I just heard I love you. It's got to be Him. Elijah needing that word. Had to stop, be still. So we need to tune and focus. In this season, stop listening to the other voices and listen 
and hear God. Fine tune to remove the static, the interference. Elijah saw and heard wind. You know, he went to the mountain and it says that he, he looked and he heard wind, he heard fire, he heard earthquakes and rocks falling. And the Bible says it wasn't the voice of God until a little voice came and spoke and God spoke through the still small voice. See, at the end of it, really what God I'm speaking about in this time, we've got to become come and be sensitive. We've got to come and be hungry. We are being awoken that we cannot naturally do it. What we have relied on in the past to navigate this world is no longer good enough. We need the one who sees the beginning from the end to lead us and guide us. See, be aware God is God. He's not going to tell you everything when you want it. God's vision to us is unfolding revelation, not everything at once. We can sense and know the greatness of what He wants to do, but not always see the final picture. The world's definition of vision is the whole picture. That's reserved for God. Now, He's given so much to us. Look at the book of Revelations. And it's for God to know and God to reveal. Why don't I get everything? And we get tangent. God, why are you telling me everything? And we have... Dummies and I'm imitating him who's fallen asleep, my grandson. You're not telling me everything. I want to know now, now, now. Give me, give me, give me. My name's Jimmy. Da- oh my goodness, that's my father came out. <clears throat> we don't get a room. Proverbs 25 2 says this. Oh, I love this. The glory of God is to conceal. The glory of kings is to discover. The glory of God is to conceal. The glory of kings is to discover. Our role is to seek Him. Our role is to abide in Him. God's purpose in speaking is to bring us close to Him, to develop that relationship with Him. He conceals so we will seek Him. We, Tracy, I didn't know that she's in a prayer this morning. Karma, it came out. That's the word you gave in the prayer meeting, wasn't it? Muriel, you got that word in the prayer meeting. God is calling us to seek Him, seek Him, seek Him. He sets up the hunger, sets up the circumstance. Timothy referred to our faith in His godness as mysteries. Colossians, the mystery of Christ. Ephesians, the mystery of the gospel. The kingdom of God will always be a mystery which should create a hunger. Wives are a mystery. You should keep a fire burning. Hunger. God wants us to seek Him, seek Him. Seek Him. The Bible says, seek Him and you will find Him. The fervency finding aware answers on social media and YouTube. Turn it to word, worship and prayer. The time you're spending in these other places, all these other places, turn it to word. Turn it into the worship. Turn it into prayer. And you will find Him. And you will sense Him. You will know Him. And you will hear Him. I had the most weirdest week and up and down emotionally and dealing with a suicide and other stuff. Uh, partly connected to this church, but mostly outside of this church. This week, uh, I'm trying, not understanding everything. And I finally got to yesterday and I was doing marriage count, uh, pre-marriage or counselling with family, a couple outside of our church. And, and I got, God, and I got, God, I just got nothing left to give. And Tracy and Kuna and the kids are gone down to visit my daughter. Oh, by the way, can you please pray for my son? He discharges from the army on Monday. His gear is all uplifted to Perth, but he's got to try and get out of Victoria to get here. All right, so to be with his family and kids, so we need a miracle. And, um, but it gave me time just to lock myself away for hours till late in the evening, just seeking Him. God, I worshipped him, I read about him, I bawled him, I just, just whatever I could, just to quietly, fervently, quietly, fervently, quietly, fervently, just to spend time with him. And our busy world of, I would encourage you to remember to the young adults who are in our house saying, do you ever take time to go walk in the bush and just hear from God for yourself? Husbands and wives of kids, maybe like happened to us, they just went out of the house and I got time alone. It's going to be my time to take them out of the house and leave someone else time alone. But maybe husbands and wives or kids, you could do that. In this time, it is God's glory to reveal. 
but it's kings to conceal, but it's kings to reveal. We're called to be kings. And He says, come and seek me. Hunger for me again. Hear my word. Forget about all the other voices. Tune into me. Make whatever changes you need to make. That's not saying, oh, I don't need to go to church. I'm going to go and do it. No, no. You need to be in church to hear. You make some other time. That footy match. The grand final. Whoa, missing the grand final. Yeah, who cares about it anymore? But seek Him. God is speaking right now. We gather and He is here. Are we hearing? In this, God is calling for people that hear Him and know, know His voice and hear Him. Know His voice and hear Him. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, God is speaking loud and clear. There's not an older call for anybody to re- respond to. It's just a time where we go, right now, what are you? I'm hearing from you. I'm the catalyst to get you to tune in. What is He saying to you? What is He saying to you? What is He saying to you? Father, we want to be a people that just don't just know about you and even listen to lots of stuff about you. But we want to be people that hear and know you so that we can do the right thing, not be misled, led astray, not be deceived, but know, seek you, know you and know what to do. Father, I pray across this room right now that as you are speaking to people's hearts and minds about areas of their own life, for the hunger to be burnt again, to burn again, I should say, that comes when you seek Him. You know, some of us want a quick fix on a worship time on Sunday, and that's beautiful. It's a recharge, but really, at the end of the day, you know, we've got a prayer meeting on Wednesday night. If you're hungry for Him, you're going to be here to seek Him as we worship, but also to intercede for our nation. If you love Him, you're going to obey Him and going to be here. You're going to pray for this nation. You're going to pray for Afghanistan. You're going to pray for Iran. You're going to pray for parts of Africa and all the rest of the world that are being persecuted. You're going to pray for our state. You're going to pray for the person next to you. You're going to pray for my son. You're going to pray for the people that have got illnesses in their body. Because you're now choosing, I'm not going to stay and watch the project. I'm going to be where God is and pray. We can play it nice or we can say the truth. So God, teach us, speak to us. We we hunger to be your people, to reveal you the glory of God on this planet. And while every head is bowed, this morning, not everybody here may be a Christian. You may not be a follower of Jesus. You may have never made a decision to follow. Maybe you did once and you walked away from God. Maybe you're not sure because you were raised in a religious family. and You did the religious part, but God's not calling you to have a religion. That's man-made. God's calling you, like I've been saying all morning, to be in a relationship with Him. And to do that, you've got to remove the barrier of sin that we're all born with. Remove that barrier. And the only way that barrier... That, that sin can be removed is that receiving Jesus who paid the penalty of that sin. The consequences of sin is death, eternal damnation. But Jesus came and paid the price that we don't have to pay for that sin. And if we will follow Him, that is repent, choose, change our mind about what the direction we're going and choose Jesus and by faith receive Him into our lives and choose to follow Him, guess what? We have suddenly moved from what I call the family of sin to the family of God. You are immersed in Him. You have access to the Spirit of God, to hear the voice of God, to understand the Word of God, to be directed by God, to be led by Him, to be comforted by Him, to be, and, and greatly to be empowered by Him. But it starts with you making the choice. I can't keep living this way, going this direction. I've now got to move to this direction. And to do that, you need to acknowledge you're a sinner. It's your condition that Jesus Christ has come to take you out of that and make you a saint and this morning in this place today if that is you you won't know all the words and the details of it you'll just have an impression that's me I've got to I've got to do something I can't live the way I'm going young person old person doesn't matter what age you are everybody has to make this decision somewhere when we come to the age of understanding we have to make this decision 
And so if you've never made the decision or you're backslidden on that decision or you're not sure, just lift your hand right now. We're just going to pray for you as a church. We're not going to embarrass you. People will talk to you later on. And so lift your hand right now. We're just going to pray across this church right now. If you brought somebody, maybe it's time for you to just whisper, is this your moment? You're here not by, you're not here by accident. And no one in this place is here by accident. God is not an accidental God. God, God is a deliberate, intentional God. You got set up to be in this place by God. Man might have invited you, but God wanted you here to hear what He's speaking to you right now. So respond to Him. Anybody in this place today that needs to respond and say, I want to follow Jesus. I need to follow Jesus and I want to follow Jesus right now. Just lift your hand and we're going to pray. We're not going to embarrass you anymore. We just want to hear from you, know who you are, so we can pray. Let's all stand, shall we? We're going to do one last thing before I dismiss this. Actually, I'm going to get the band up. What is the time? Oh, it's looking at the time. No, we won't get the band up. I'll close the service. Um, But we're going to do one last thing. We're going to have a cup of coffee and some chips and we have good chips if you're a guest here. But I want to do one last thing. For anybody that's been struggling with that decision, I wouldn't make it even easier for you. I'm going to pray a prayer and the whole congregation, even the slack ones, are going to pray with me. All right? And we're going to pray together and you believe what you're praying right now and you enter into God's kingdom. So say these words after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come as a sinner needing salvation. I repent of my sin and ask for your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. I receive that now. I am now your child. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you said that with sincerity, then you entered into the family of Jesus Christ. And we would love to know who you are. Come and speak to myself, Pastor Dan or Pastor Tracy or or someone else that looks intelligent. I don't know why we say that because it's in the eye of the beholder. Don't come to Papa Smurf, all right? That's in other words. Father, thank you for your word. God, I pray something starts burning. I pray right now that the Holy Ghost will burn upon the coals, that the wind will, sorry, blow upon coals that have gone dormant. And that I saw this a months ago and I keep seeing it from time to time. And I know it's a truth that there, some of us, the coals, because life has worn us out or dampened us or smothered us, our fires become coals. And God is saying, I want to revive that again. I want the Holy Ghost to breathe on that again. Worship is part of the Word, is part of But seek me, seek me, seek me. Even though I don't, God's glory is what He seals. King's glory is what they would get revealed. We pray that over this congregation in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. Go and have a cup of coffee. We'll stay around to pray for anyone that needs.